Uh, does Jody come? He <coughs> said yes. Oh, good, it's not. Probably start, many though. people here. Oh, are they? You're lucky. Yeah. Yeah. How's Jody? Is she going to be here? Good evening, and welcome to the Town Council meeting of Tuesday, January 16th. Councillor Hurley, would you lead us in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Dolores, would you take attendance, please? Sure. Councillor Breton? Here. Councillor Forrest? Present. Councillor Hurley? Here. Councillor Martina? Here. Councillor Lesser? Here. Councillor Rao? Here. Councillor Spinella? Here. Deputy Mayor Martino? Here. And Mayor Maureen Bello? Here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, tonight we have no presentations to begin with, and we have no public hearings. So we will start the meeting with public comment. I do want to remind everybody that public <coughs> comment is limited to five minutes. And um, there is a monitor by the town clerk that is keeping time so that you are able to see the time as it's going down. And I will remind you when you have, then you'll have 20 seconds to finish up. So we'll start with public comment. Is there anybody from the public that would like to speak? Come on up. Please state your name and address. My name is Kelly De La Cruz, and I live at 179 Middletown Avenue in Wethersfield. I've been an environmentalist for 26 years when a recycling program in my town had just begun. I remember fighting with my parents to separate recyclable materials into the yellow rectangular plastic bin. That same year, my amazing fourth grade teacher taught us the importance of taking care of the environment, and we became passionate about it. She enrolled our class in the Kids for Saving the Earth Club, a club founded by an 11-year-old boy who battled and shortly died of cancer. That boy, Clinton Hill, couldn't understand why we would destroy or poison our planet, so he created the club to help teach other kids to value nature and protect it. This club still exists today, and members can receive educational materials to help empower our children to be environmentalists and take care of our planet. Since it is the only place we have to live, it is important to take care of it. I still have some of those materials from way back then, and I love showing my children um, these documents to help them understand that the earth is important. You've been presented with a proposal to ban fracking waste here in town, and the Public Works Committee will be meeting to discuss this ordinance proposal immediately after this town council meeting. Fracking waste is produced when immense amount of water laced with chemicals is pumped into the ground to extract natural gas. The gas is separated and the poisonous wastewater remains. Fracking waste does not belong in our town. It's a cocktail of chemicals that are extremely harmful to our environment and are also harmful to, the, to our health. <clears throat> the waste can contaminate our waterways, even seeping into our drinking water. Allowing this waste to be transported, disposed of, or used in our town will cost us and the residents a great deal of money when vehicles transporting this hazardous waste material <clears throat> through Weathersfield or on I-91 crash or when a pipe or holding tank leaks. This can and will happen if we allow this waste into our town. It did in Dimmock, Pennsylvania. <clears throat> Drinking water there was destroyed by fracking waste. It's better for us to be proactive now rather than reactive in a time of need. We cannot afford to wait and see what the state will decide on this issue. In Pennsylvania, their Department of Environmental Protection was negligent in protecting citizens from the harmful effects of fracking waste. Citizens filed numerous complaints, and those complaints were ignored by a state organization sworn to protect the environment and the citizens that live there. Some of the complaints included respiratory conditions, digestive issues, skin conditions, and more. These chemicals are also a risk to pregnant women. The Pennsylvania DEP hid complaints and even failed to test the water for safety. Who's to say that this could not happen in Connecticut? Fracking waste bans have been passed in 33 towns, including Hartford, Glastonbury, and Rocky Hill. We need to enjoy the environmental progress that is taking place. We must lead the way toward a more sustainable future. In order to do that, we must also ensure that we have the best language in our ordinance to avoid potential loopholes. The ordinance proposed is just okay. 
We can do better than that. I urge you to consider the language changes that I suggested in an email I sent to each of you back in November. These suggestions were recommended by Jennifer Siskind of Food and Water Watch CT, who has conducted information sessions and worked with towns all over the state about this issue. In fact, we have actually organized in such an info section with info session with Ms. Siskin that will be held on Monday, January 29th at 6.30 p.m. in the community room of the Wethersfield Public Library. I urge all counselors, the town manager, and any other interested residents to attend this meeting to gain more knowledge of this topic. I thank you in advance for your careful consideration in this matter. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else that would like to speak? Okay, come on up. Deborah Cohen, 73 Church Street. Um, basically, I just want to say ditto to everything <laughs> that you have just heard. Um, I have been reading about fracking and fracking waste for quite a number of years, and I am absolutely convinced that it is, um, it's, it's absolutely poisonous. Not only the, the process itself, but the, the byproducts that um, come out of, out of fracking that would be perhaps spread on our streets um, there are towns that are using it for de-icing de purposes. Um, like Kelly, one of my biggest fears is that transport through our town might very well result in spills over which we will have no control. That means that the fracking waste will go into our water, <coughs> it will affect our crops, it will, it, it will affect us in every possible health way. Um, what I would really like to see is Weathersfield, um, joining other towns that are taking the lead in putting their resources into developing alternative energies rather than playing the game with the same old, same old energy sources that we have now. I think that we can do a lot better and I really urge Weathersfield to move forward on this and join the 33 other towns across the state to say no, we really don't need it, it will only hurt us. So thank you for listening, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Anybody else? Christy Salters Pedno, 15 Fairmont Street. Um, I'm also here to speak in support of moving forward with the fracking waste ban ordinance. Um, I think I just wanted to, many points have been um, addressed, but I, I wanted to make a couple points about why I think this is very important in Weathersfield. Um, Weathersfield 1 uh, has 91 going through it. And so um, if fracking waste is allowed through Weathersfield, we will absolutely see a very large volume of this waste uh, coming probably mainly from Pennsylvania where there's a large amount of fracking activity um, through our state and right through our town. And 91 runs right next to the Connecticut River. In this town, we are a steward of a very important river, and we need to consider that uh, when we consider this ordinance. So I thank you for considering it, and I thank you for moving it forward. Thank you. Anybody else? Come on up. Uh, Marissa Powers, 30 Holly Lane. Um, I'd like to piggyback on what my uh, fellow Weathersfield residents have uh, pointed out with a few additional items, um, noting that S91 would be a corridor um, for the waste that many other of our associated towns and cities have already uh, you know, said that they don't want in their towns. The fact that it would negatively impact the en environment for years to come, but also from the financial standpoint, we have agriculture in our town in the form of the, um, the, the businesses that grow the sod down by the river. So that would impact their um, financial um, implications. And since they're businesses and taxpayers in our towns, as well as just humans being in our town, th those are considerations as well that I wanted to uh, think of. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes, come on up. My name's Marianne Lienow, and I live at 456 Main Street, and I just wanted to um, add my voice to these ladies and say that I support the fracking ban in Weathersfield, and I think that it would be great if we could have, you know, strong language you know, um, 
supporting that um, because the waste, you know, it's harmful. It's it's harmful to the health of our residents. And I mean, I have four children growing up here in Weathersfield, and I, you know, I. I think we need to do what we can to protect the environment, and um, I agree with everything that's been said here today. Thank you. Anybody else? Come on up. Uh, Megan Faber, Heartline, 149 Walker Hill Road. I'm commenting today, like, many others i'm sure you're shocked to hear um, to support a fracking waste ban for our town um, the millions of gallons of radioactive wa water waste that are left that's left over after these processes it has to go somewhere and we really don't want it to go here we don't want it to go through here even um, as kelly was saying this waste has been shown to lead to a number of health problems including leukemia damage to respiratory systems to the neural systems to the liver, brain, kidneys, and to developing fetuses. Um, last week in Kentucky, experts determined that fracking waste, which was illegally dumped in a landfill, has to remain there because it's too dangerous to move it. So this town now has radio, radioactive waste sitting in its landfill, um, and those who dumped it illegally are paying what results in a small fine. If we allow it to move through our town, it's only a matter of time before a truck spills or crashes and this toxic waste is then in our water and in our environment. If it's allowed to be stored in, in Connecticut, it could come into use as construction fill or as a de-icing agent on our roads, which again, introduces these same harmful things into our environment. Um, over 30 towns in Connecticut have passed fracking wastebands and Weathersfield really should be the next one. Everyone here knows that what we actually need is a permanent state ban from the whole state of Connecticut, but we don't have that yet. This isn't just an important step we can take as a town to protect ourselves and our families. It also contributes to a growing call for such a statewide ban by showing that the state's constituents care enough about this issue that we're going to handle it locally and not just sit around and wait for someone else to handle these problems. And so because of all of those different things, I think it's really important that we take steps forward to create a fracking waste ban in our town. So thank you so much for listening. We appreciate it. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak? Come on up, Cindy. Good evening. My name is Cindy Greenblatt, and I live at 35 Broad Street, and I'm here to add to some of the voices that you've already heard in favor of a fracking ban ordinance, which I hope you will discuss and agree to move forward tonight. I want to address something, two things that I've heard repeatedly in the discussion about the fracking ban. The first is, let's wait and see what the state does. And that's an argument that I've heard discussed in many different venues. I think the last speaker made the most compelling argument, and it piggybacks on something that the Branford selectmen said. We have to take action locally to let the state know what we want them to do for us as a state. And I think rather than waiting and let the state impose restrictions upon us or impose something that we don't want to see happen in terms of that waste, its use or disposal. I think it's important that we join the other 33 and it's only going to be 33 for a matter of days or weeks. There are many other towns that are considering this now as Weathersfield is. So that's the first thing. Acting now sends that message that and it it's, couldn't be more American to take local action so that we have state action. The other thing that I've heard is that this is a progressive issue. Um, somehow it's been characterized as being something um, left or right, or uh, I'm sorry, left, and that it is, in a sense, inappropriate. I want to say that this isn't a left issue. It's not a conservative issue. It's not a progressive issue. It's not a democratic issue. And it's not a Republican issue. And you don't have to believe me, because I brought the information here to share with you. This is the Office of Legislative Research. Its byline is an objective research for Connecticut's legislature. And in December 18, 2017, less than a month ago, they released a um, document which listed examples of Connecticut towns that have adopted ordinances on fracking waste. And they did it very nicely in a chart. 
So I was able to go right to that chart and they had links to the towns and they only did 19. They just did representative ones. And I was able to link to those towns ordinances and look at their voting patterns. Now, if this were a progressive issue or if this were an issue that only appealed to a certain segment of the population, you'd think that it would have a very um, unique vote, that the votes would be close. Let me just read to you, and this is the Connecticut um, Legis Office of Legislative Research, some of the voting that took place on the fracking issue in Ashford, 30 to 2. In Branford, it was a unanimous vote of their council. In Chaplin, 14 to 6. In Glastonbury, unanimous. In Hartford, unanimous. In Hebron, a unanimous vote. In Middletown, the vote was 10 to 2. In New London, it was 5 to 2. In Portland, unanimous. In Rocky Hill, unanimous. In Wyndham, unanimous. In Windsor, unanimous. In Woodstock, it was 90 to 1. They did it at a town meeting. In New Milford, 182 to nothing. These are not people, um, let me rephrase that. These are progressives, liberals, conservatives, Republicans, Democrats. They are coming together on an environmental issue. All right. There's no way that this can be characterized as anything other than something good for the people of the towns and communities in which we live. So I hope you'll agree to bring this forward. I think that we can add our voice to the chorus. Um, when it was considered by the legislature in the House, it only got considered by the House, but the vote was 141 to 6. That's not a partisan vote. That's a vote for people, for the environment, for the water, for the future. I hope we're going to take that same vote here. I, um, I, we've entrusted you as stewards of our people, our land, our children, our future, and I think that um, you can see that there's a lot of support for you doing that. So thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak? Bob? Good evening, Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. I don't know much about this fracking business, but from my understanding is it comes from natural gas. In order to capture natural gas under the, under the ground and bring it to the surface or whatever they do. But the, re the real thing these folks should be doing is going down in their basements and shutting off their natural gas line. That would be the real thing to do. Same with the town of Wethersfield. You should go and tr if, you, if you support this, you should not buy any natural gas because all natural gas, or a lot of it comes from the, the idea of fracking. You put your money where your mouth is. Go shut your gas off. That's the way you do it. But to come here and take up our time, I, I don't know if that's, that's really a worthwhile thing. But the real thing to do is go shut your gas off and go buy yourself a couple of cords of wood and chop it up and keep yourself warm. That should be the same if the town of Wethersfield supports this. You should do the same thing. Put your money where your vote is and go turn your natural gas faucet off. If you believe in this. If you don't believe in this, and you vote for it, and you keep your gas running, that tells another story about your character. So I'd give that some thought before you vote on this. And that goes with all the other damn towns around the, the entire state and wherever else. If they believe in this, they should go and also turn off their natural gas. Put CNG, CNG on notice that you're not going to buy their product. That's the true way of doing it. Not coming here and playing some verbal, have some verbal discussions that we're gonna clamp down. Put your mouth, put your money where your mouth is. Now tonight also, the long-weighted, the long-weighted budget adjustments are coming up. And, you know, looking at this, I, I don't understand fully how it's going to be distributed. You know, I do read in here that, uh, that the Board of Education is being cut on their ECS money to the tune of like 867000 I hope, and I don't understand what I'm reading, 
I hope you are reducing the Board of Education by $867,000. That is their budgeted amount of money. I hope you are not spreading that out to all the other departments, which will affect the rest of us. The Board of Education is one of the most arrogant group of people we have in this town. They want, want, want. Their budgets have been exceptionally high over the many years that I've been attending these meetings. And now to share the blunt of this adjustment with the rest of us is wrong. And I hope that's not what's going to happen because I don't understand again in reading the information that was on in the agenda. And I hope you are going to hit them with that $867,000 loss because it's their responsibility. I know, the, I know, Mayor, you're sitting there like this. You don't want to hear about this. But that's exactly how it is. They get the most amount of money. They're the most minority, the school system, in this town. The rest of us are the majority, and we get hammered by the town council and the board of education. Now, with these adjustments, these midterm adjustments, I think they need to have those adjustments put directly on their shoulders. We shouldn't carry them. Our roads are in terrible condition. I ride on nothing but boom, 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 down the road. And it's terrible. We need to get these roads back in shape. We keep putting money into the school system. We're not getting the results. We're not getting the results at all. But we're spending like drunken sailors to the school system, and I hope we take $867,000 out of their budget tonight, not spread it among the rest of us, because that's not fair. That's not equitable. And if you want to stand for being inequitable, you will, you will spread it across all of us. But if you stand for equity, you will solely hit the Board of Ed with $867 and some change tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, the back of the room, Julie. Good evening, my name is Julie Montaneri. <clears throat> 43 Amato Circle. It's kind of nice to be back at the podium <laughs> after a pretty long hiatus. So I came out to support the local fracking ban. I agree with just about everything that's been said already. I also wanted to state that I think that there's pretty much unanimous agreement that we don't want fracking waste um, in our town but there might be a little bit of a controversy because there is a state moratorium in place already, which I do appreciate. However, I don't think it can hurt to join these 33 other towns that have already stated that they place a priority on protecting the environment. It sends a message to the DEEP that when they do take this up, that this is a high value in Wethersfield as it is in these other 33 towns. Um, I liked, I, I noticed that there's a little bit of a difference between some of these and that in Rocky Hill, for example, bids must include a specified statement of compliance. And I do like that provision. It puts the responsibility on the people that want to do business with our town to certify that um, they are not using fracking waste. And I, I kind of like that provision. And I also like that they're charging in Rocky Hill um, for a violation $250 per day, not just a total of $250. So I know you'll, you know, the committee will go into some of the particulars and so forth, but I do like the stronger language in the Rocky Hill ordinance. I also wanted to state on the topic of the town, uh, I'm sorry, the state, um, cut that has been handed down to the town and I am not in I am in favor of sharing the um, the pain between the town and the Board of Education 
there are many, many, many of us, uh, all, these, all these moms have kids in school, and they are, of course, not the only ones. Many of you guys have kids in school. And in Wethersfield, we have always placed a high value on education, so I appreciate any effort to kind of spread the pain across um, the town and, and the board. And I know that everybody's doing their best under a really difficult budget, so I, I appreciate the approach that um, the mayor has stated and that she's um, <clears throat> pursuing with the board chair. So thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak? Tom, come on up. Good evening, Tom Mazzarella, 600 Walcott Hill Road. <clears throat> I just wanted to speak about the uh, budget reductions, or uh, the $867,000 uh, reduction in ECS funding. I strongly believe that the funding should be split proportionate just as it was handed down from the state and that we would take 867,000 from the Board of Education budget and the remainder from the town budget. We, back in May when this was an issue to vote on the budget, I stood up here and suggested that you consider not increasing the Board of Education budget, we keep it at the $56 million that it was and uh, it didn't shake out that way. Uh, roughly $58 million was approved. Uh, it was reduced uh, some $500,000 subsequent to that. Uh, if you take the 867000 from the Board of Ed budget, you're still 300000 above the minimum budget requirement. So you don't have to worry about uh, hitting that number. Uh, Mr. Emmett has built a budget with, uh, in my opinion, a severe uh, amount of fat in that budget. That budget doesn't get published for everybody to see. Uh, the town council doesn't oversee that budget. Um, they pretty much do what they want with that budget. Several months ago, before the state budget was signed, we were looking at a nine or $10 million cut to Weathersfield. At that time, Mr. Emmett stated in a uh, budget meeting, I was not attending that meeting, but I, this is hearsay. Um, the, the discussion was, what do we do if we have this severe uh, cut? And uh, he said that he could handle two million, three million, once he got to four million dollars, we were going to have a big problem. So he's admitted that there's plenty of fat in there. So I think you should hold him to to the fire, take the cut, and apply it equal share, the 867 to the Board of Ed, the remainder to the town. I don't see any reason why all these other departments should be hit with reductions. You have social and youth services, you have the public library, parks and rec, uh, and so on. Their, their funding wasn't cut. The library, for example, is one of the, probably one of the tightest budgets in all the line items. They have to kick in another 20,000? I don't see that. And the point was brought up. There's 3,700 students in the school system. There's 27,000 residents. The budget is so highly skewed towards education, and I think we have a fantastic education system in this town. But you can't just keep throwing more and more money at it. You have to draw the line. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak? Come on up. I'm Ira Collins from Nine Avalon Place. I'm 
I'm, I'm not as well versed in research as the others, but I'm here in support of um, fracking waste ban. Um, as a mom, dragging my kids here, I want them to know that you know that we care about the earth, the planet, environment for their future, and I hope um, you will support the fracking waste ban. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Come on up. <coughs> Jessica Barton, 431 Church Street. And if you, I'm here in support of two things, the moving forward of the fracking waste ordinance, the ban, and if and spreading around the hit that the Board of Ed would take. If you could see me while Cindy and Julie were speaking, everything they were saying, I would just copy. I won't, I won't but I would if you could see what I was saying. Anyway, I'm very tired, and I'm going to go take my baby home and go to sleep, but I just wanted to get on record tonight as being in support of both of those things. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Come on up. Hi, Casey White, 91 Center Street. Um, I'm also here, as many other people are, to support fr the fracking waste ban that's been proposed. I also agree that we should strengthen it, make it even stronger. I looked up how many square miles Wethersfield is, because the town of Wethersfield is the people in it, but it's also the land and the water in it. It's 13.1 square miles, 6% of that about is water. And there's no one else that's gonna look out for that land and water as closely as we can. It's really up to us. Um, fracking waste, we don't really know what's in it. That's because the oil and gas industry works really hard to keep that secret. They don't want people to know. And I don't want that in our water and in our soil. I don't want it on our roads. I don't want it traveling through Weathersfield. Um, it's also important to remember that preventing hazardous materials from getting in your soil and water can be free. This ordinance would be free. That's very cheap. Correcting for that, cleaning up those messes, can be really expensive. And as one commenter said, in one town, it's not even possible. They're not allowed to move that radioactive waste because it's too dangerous. Um, so I'm in favor of the more fiscally responsible option of banning the waste and keeping it out of here. Um, to another commenter's point, we all use natural gas. That's true. We're all part of the problem. And I really see this fracking waste ban as at the beginning of a step of Weathersfield and the state of Connecticut becoming leaders, potentially, in shifting away from the fossil fuel industry. We can't get away from it because it's so vast, but it's changing, it already is, the industry has to change. And we could get a piece of that pie. We can really brand ourselves and position ourselves as communities and as a state that really care about this and who that wanna bring smart people in to invest, to develop new technologies, and become um, you know, a premier place that people talk about when they think about renewable energy. I think this is a really broad issue that we can um, champion. So I would like to see the fracking waste ban move forward um, with strong language. And I'll also finish by saying that I'm also in favor um, regarding the budget of spreading the cost to the town from the school budget cuts. Um, one thing that's important to me as a parent is that class sizes are small, and I really appreciate that. My daughter's in first grade. Her kindergarten class was a great size. Her first grade class was a great size. And we were kind of worried. We were hearing chatter at the beginning of the year. Are they gonna make the classes bigger? Are they gonna have an extra teacher? Are they not? And it ended up turning out great. I'm so happy. That's one of the things that parents discuss when they're kind of comparing or learning about other people's kids' schools. One of the first questions you ask is, what are the class sizes like? And that's an immediate marker of how well that school is caring for that child and the quality of the education they're getting. So, you know, if sharing this burden, if that's one of the kind of results we get, um, then it's more than worth it because that's the kind of thing that people move to a community for. Um, so, thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak tonight? We had two letters that I thought I forwarded to the council from um, 
Sarah Truex and Diane Everett. Thank you. Both against uh, having fracking. Thank you, and I think I received a third as well, Dolores, and I can get you that name so you can enter that in the record too. I'm sorry, I don't, I don't see it quickly, but I did receive um, an email, I believe, from Christine, and I'll forward it to you so you can okay. add that to the record as well. Thank you. Um, okay, so the public comment is now closed. Do we have any council reports? Councilor Rell? Not quite a council report, but tomorrow night's P and Z meeting has been canceled for those in attendance who care or watching it on TV because of the impending snowstorm. Thank you. I appreciate that announcement. Any other council committee reports? Please other reports. Okay, seeing none, we'll move into council comments. Any council members have a comment? Councillor Forrest. Just two. The first is we've heard a lot of discussion about the fracking. People have certainly come up. Some people had to leave, obviously. But that we'll be having a committee meeting after this meeting to discuss uh, fracking further and that it's open to the public because we operate a pretty open government here. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, is that better? I'm probably getting yeah. yelled at. There we go. Uh, we have a committee meeting, uh, infrastructure committee meeting after this meeting to discuss fracking, fracking in more detail, and it is open to the public for anyone who would like to attend. And uh, that's my first comment. And second comment is, I'm supposed to say happy birthday to my son who is now three years old and watching and going to bed until I said happy birthday to him. So I've officially fulfilled my obligation as father. Well, happy birthday to him. <laughs> happy birthday to Councillor Rell's daughters. Same birthday? Son? Yeah, daughter's I would feel son? I would be <laughs> doing a disservice I'll to set, my own daughter. I'll set the stage for you. Who I don't <laughs> think is watching tonight. I really hope she's not watching tonight. <laughs> should be in bed soon. But if she is, happy birthday, Madeline. Uh, happy ninth birthday. As actually, Deb Cohen was there. She remembers my daughter. She baby, or uh, um, daycare when she was just an infant. So happy birthday, Madeline. Thank you. Any other council comments? Or birthdays. Or, yeah, birthdays. <laughs> okay, I just have a few upcoming events I'd like to mention. We have the State of the Town Breakfast Meeting on Thursday at the Keeney Center. The Weathersfield St. Patrick's Day Parade Committee's Corn Beef Dinner is this Saturday night at the Community Center. Um, as mentioned before, there'll be a fracking information session on Monday, January 29th at 6.30 in the community room of the library. The uh, Mayor's Charity Ball is hosting a wine and whiskey event on Friday, February 2nd. Um, and finally, I'm happy to announce that I will begin hosting Coffee with the Mayor. It's going to be once a month on a Saturday, and the first um, coffee will be Saturday, January 27th at Max Bebo's from 9.30 to 11. So I'll be sitting there and would encourage anybody who wants to stop by and have a chat. Um, come on down Saturday, January 27th. Thank you. Are you buying, Mayor? <laughs> if it's only coffee, I'm buying. <laughs> um, Jeff, would you give the town manager's report, please? Thank you. Uh, just a couple of information points. Um, the governor put $4.3 billion worth of transportation projects on hold, uh, waiting some source of revenue to pay for those. Uh, that includes the pedestrian bridge over Putnam, the Putnam Bridge, the walkway. Uh, originally, that was supposed to be 100% paid for by DOT, uh, but that project's on hold uh, pending some resolution of a transportation plan. Also, the uh, bridge on Ridge Road over the 515 will be rebuilt beginning no, um, April 1st, 2018. Derek uh, Greger, our town engineer, has been attending those meetings. Uh, with a completion date in 2018, uh, November 2018. It will remain open one lane, and they'll manage traffic through the construction process. That's what I have. Okay, thank you. Dolores, do you have any town clerk's communications? Uh, today I received the uh, endorsement uh, for both the uh, Democrats and Republican town committees, and they, everybody who will be uh, serving for two years. If there's anybody else uh, who would like to apply, you, could, you still have time. I mean, there's a whole process for that. Thank you. 
Okay, moving into council action. There are no ordinances, resolutions, or appointments tonight for action. The vehicle lift will stay on the table under unfinished business. So we'll move into other business. Approval of a new lease for the stockpile area. Do I have a motion? Yes, Mayor, I'll make a motion. I move to approve a lease agreement between the Balf Company and the Town of Wethersfield for the area known as the Stockpile Yard on the Jordan Lane extension. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Jeff. Thank you, Madam Mayor and, and Council. Uh, as it st stated in the memo, we've had this area under lease from the Boff Company for at least 20 years. Um, the existing lease has run out years and years ago. This one is now open-ended. Um, and it just provides that we ensure, provide them a certificate of insurance, outlines the areas uh, that we do have use of and what materials can and can't be used. Of course, no hazardous materials. The original intent of the area was just for the leaves. And although that makes up a majority of the use, we have used it for sand, rock. Um, we used it for the debris management area when we had the uh, winter storm a few years ago. So all that got worked through with the Boff Company and town attorney has reviewed this, Boff reviewed this agreement, and we recommend the council adopt. And there's no cost to this lease? No. Okay, thank you. Council questions? Any questions? Councilor Rell? Uh, Jeff, I know you said no hazardous materials. Are there millings there, road millings at all? There can be at some time, and they've been made aware of that. Okay. Are the millings at all treated before they're placed there, or are they, and are they only town millings? They're only town millings. And, but they t are taken from asphalt? Yeah, town roads. Okay. And going on to what we were talking about with fracking, is, is any of that asphalt, does that contain any oils or substances from byproducts related to fracking or not that I'm aware of it does have petroleum in it and has gravel in it and has sand in it and has those kind of things okay but it's milled it's crushed and it's screened would we ever take millings from roads that are not Wethersfield roads not to my knowledge okay can we take millings that are from roads that are not part of Wethersfield's jurisdiction in that stockpile not in that stockpile no I mean if we're buying if we're buying materials, we buy clean material, not millings. We usually don't buy millings. Okay. The millings that would be stored in that stockpile, are they used for any other surface uh, covering in the town? We have used them for bank stabilization. We've used them to shore up roads in certain spots. Um, yeah. Right. And they're not hazardous at all? They're um, not to my knowledge. We take them up from the roads, we put them back on the roads. It, it's all a legal product. It's not regulated as hazardous. Okay. If we didn't have a, a fracking ban, a temporary moratorium in the state, would we take any possible fracked byproduct and store it on? I don't think with the state moratorium we have access to fracking products. If we did not have the state moratorium ban. I, I don't know. That's a hypothetical. But it is a storing where one could store, where we do currently store asphalt millings. It would depend on the classification of the fracking materials. If it's hazardous, it's regulated, it would probably not be permitted there, nor would we want to put it on someone's private property. Okay, thank you. Any other questions, comments? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay, the motion passes. Next motion, budget reductions. Do Mo we have a motion? Motion to recommend the Board of Ed develop a 2,750, uh, $274,556 reduction to their fiscal year 2017-18 budget so that the town council can enact a deficit reduction plan to accommodate the recent state aid reductions. Second. Okay. Jeff, would you 
begin sure. the conversation, please. Um, since the three days after we readopted the budget in November and we received what are commonly known as the holdback reductions, <laughs> um, we've been looking at ways to reduce our budget in a fashion that doesn't impact, at least tremendously impact the programs. So over those weeks, we have put together a list of roughly $650,000 worth of cuts on the town side, working with some employee groups, um, looking at revenues as well as expenditures, looking at programming on debt service and new revenue streams or at least one-time revenues that have materialized since then to develop about $650,000 worth of reductions we can take on the town side this year and provide that the Board of Ed take roughly 275 of the $922,000 worth of reductions, a 867 to them based upon the ECS cut. Okay, thank you. Um, do we have council comments? Yeah, um, I have a comment. I was just wondering why we wouldn't have brought this through the Finance Committee to take a look, because I saw some things that I know I sent you mayor and mm -hmm. I thought should be discussed possibly at the finance committee before we sent it over to the board it, we're just making a decision at the council meeting sure the um, Jeff correct me if I'm wrong the state um, is requiring a letter in the beginning of February and we were trying to move this mm -hmm. forward so that that could occur um, we did have someone out of town so that the Budget and Finance Committee meet, could not meet last week. And so I thought it was important to try to get it onto this agenda um, so that the town manager could get that letter off to the state in a timely fashion. Okay, I don't agree with everything on here, so just state that. Council Latina, oh, I'm sorry, Jeff, did you no, go follow ahead. up? No, no, no. Okay. Go ahead. I was Latina. just curious, what is the letter that they're requiring? Um, OPM sent out, Office of Policy and Management sent out a letter to all the towns uh, reminding us that we are under a spending cap, although they've reduced our budgets by, at least the town of Wethersfield budget, by $3 million. They're still concerned we're going to spend too much money. So we have to comply with that. <laughs> no sarcasm, right? Uh, just a little bit. None. I'll admit it. Um, <laughs> so we have to prepare by February 7th the comparison of the 2017 to 2018 budget and submit that to OPM showing that we have not exceeded the two and a half percent cap. Now there are several exclusions and certain things that can be deleted, but we need to wrap this process up in time to submit that letter and that spreadsheet to the state. It doesn't appear that we're going to be going over. No, but it's really not, it may not be about 18 but it's gonna be 18 versus 19. That's gonna be the issue. 17 to 18, we're okay, mm -hmm. because we have uh, decided to donate a vast portion of our revenue back to the state. Um, but it's gonna be 18 versus 19, because some of these reductions are gonna be one-offs that in some form or fashion you're gonna to have to replace. So determining how we're gonna end or how we're gonna structure 18 and then go into 19 and still have to do that comparison if the two and a half percent cap still exists um, is really the issue. How, how does the holdback or the cut that they're making on ECS affect the MBR? I don't think it does because under the uh, legislation that adopted the budget back in the, in the state budget back in October, it said that MBR is not relevant if the uh, reductions are due to state cuts. I would consider, although it's a holdback and it was discretionary at the governor, I would consider that for MBR purposes to be a state reduction. Now that may be challenged by the Department of Administration or whoever, but I think that's consistent with the intent of the law. And I'm not a lawyer, but I'd make that case. So MBR, is, to me, is really not an issue one way or the other. This is about how are we going to structure 18 so when you try to replace the one-time expenses and the reductions you're taking on the board um, next year because you have programs that you must continue at some point, mm -hmm. are you going to exceed the cap and then, probably, and then possibly face, because you exceed the cap, a reduction in revenue from the state? Now, 
again, there's certain things that are excluded, certain things that are included. Um, so it's really a formula that hasn't been fleshed out. So we're going to do the best we can to flesh it out. They've kind of made some discretionary, um, let the towns t some discretion on how they apply certain exemptions. So we're going to figure that out, what puts us in the best position next year, because next year we have 300,000 of MDC. We're going to have to replace some debt service. We're going to have natural growth in health insurance and so forth and so on. So we have to prepare ourselves in this situation for 19. And getting this resolved sooner than later allows us to kind of do that. That leads me to my next question, if I could be indulged. Um, the way that this is being distributed or potentially being distributed, does that leave us in a really boxed in position on the town side? Because it appears that we would have nowhere to go. What I would like to do, and we've had some conversation, I apologize. Um, as we work through this Friday, Saturday, thinking about it over the weekend and so forth, probably what I would recommend you do at this point is not amend the budget but recognize the deficit mitigation plan so the budget stays as adopted in November. And then address and recognize and accept by motion the $922,000 worth of reduction. So formally, uh, officially, your budget is still $922,000 greater than you're actually going to spend. So you're going to compare the November adopted against the 19 adopted. See what I'm saying? I don't. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, if you were to go forth tonight and amend the budget by $922,000, reducing it, right, bringing it down, mm -hmm. and then you go into 19 and you have to replace all those things. Yep. So now you're adding $922,000 to 19 plus whatever else you get to add on. The possibility of exceeding the 2.5% cap is greater Very real. than if you leave it up here, reduce it mechanically mm -hmm. or administratively rather than formal and legally then you're still prepared for 19. You're making the necessary cuts, you're gonna drop your budget, you're not gonna spend as much, but you're not amending your budget mm -hmm. formally mm -hmm. to address that and thus setting yourself up for a rebound oh, yeah, yeah. in 19. Got it. Thank you. Sure. Other council um, comments, questions? <laughs> so just to be clear, the. The motion, so the motion, so I'm clear, is, okay, we're going to hold on actually doing what we're doing and let the Board of Ed, right, take an action? Yes, the okay. motion um, was to recommend that the Board of Ed um, reduce their 2017-18 budget by the $274,000. So in doing that, we're um, assuring that the Board of Education will find that, that money in their budget. And once we have their assurance on that, they can make a motion at their Board of Ed meeting next week, we hope. Then we can come back on our February 5th meeting and formally adopt a mitigation plan. And that gives the town manager a few days to get the necessary paperwork to OPM. How'd I do? Awesome. Clear? Do we, have to, do we have to put a dollar figure on it? Dollar figure on what? Well, the Board of Education. Asking them to come up with a deficit plan. Um, I would say yes, that we need to um, give the Board of Education direction on what we want their cut to look like, or, or it's not a cut, what, the, what we want to withhold from their spending this year. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Councilor Rell? Thank you. Where did... And again, I, I quickly jotted it down. Where did we come up with the 274,000, was it 547? Sure, those were the, the town manager and finance department um, went through the potential areas in the town budget to increase and decrease um, to come up with the, the town's portion of the 922.081 and it ends up that that is the, um, the dollar amount that remains for the Board of Ed. Um, Jeff, if you would, you, would yeah, you like to discuss those? Cuts? Well, I think what's throwing people off or what throws the numbers off, that the total reduction received to the town was 922081. We're addressing 
on the town side, or we're, we're looking at it as a revenue to the town. The adult education uh, revenue sharing goes right to the board. So we're not addressing that in this action at all. So the real number is, what is it, Mike, 921 something? 298. Yeah, so that kind of where the differential is. So when you look at the 647,000 plus numbers we came up with on the town side and you deduct that from the 921 whatever it is you're left with the recommended reduction on the board side the bulk of the 922,000 was 867,000 roughly from ECS that's Does, correct and that ECS comes to the town yes. side first Mm -hmm. That's and a revenue to the general fund of the town. Okay. D of that 867, 674, does the town budget take into consideration any of that money, or is that over onto the Board of Ed? We, we realize and recognize and budget for the ECS revenue to the general fund of the town. And our distribution of the Board of Ed budget is a general fund expense. So it's money into the general fund, money out of the general fund. Mm -hmm. So with the reductions, we're reducing the general fund to account for those, that ECS reduction. We're accounting for the ECS reduction from the total town budget or from the Board of Ed's portion of the budget? Well, what we're proposing is a shared uh, effort to reduce the spending townwide, admitting there's a $922,000 hole, and based upon the work we've done on the town side, Mike O'Neill and his staff and the other town departments that have scoured their resources, we've determined that there's $647 plus thousand dollars worth of reductions we can make on the town side without really interrupting anything from a programmatic point of view or laying people off or cutting positions or so forth and so on which have been our concern all along that we're not you know, we're not overstaffed so we can do that and then allow the board to take a two hundred and seventy four thousand dollar reduction which trues up the budget as it relates to revenue and expenditures uh, for the rest of the year have we heard from the board of ed at all i mean this is no surprise i mean we knew november well, it was before Election Day, and it was before inauguration here. So we knew end of October, early November, that there was going to be a $922,000 hit for the town. Had we talked to the Board of Ed about this or heard from them at all? I have spoken to the chairperson of the Board of Ed. Uh, she contacted me several times to ask uh, when the town council would be um, determining the Board of Ed's share. Um, and after I talked to Jeff last week, I did speak to her again, and I told her that we had, um, you know, fa we had developed a proposal that would come to council that the, the burden would be about $270,000. Um, and then I spoke with um, the town manager and was in contact with Councilor Hurley, and um, we both discussed the fireworks. There was a small portion um, that um, Councillor Hurley and I both thought should be added back in. I hope I'm not speaking out of turn. No, you're Mike. not. Um, it was about $6,500, and it paid for um, town personnel to attend the to attend in support. Attend to. Tend to yes. and support <laughs> the yeah not attend excuse me <laughs> to tend to and support the fireworks. So um, I did go back to the chairperson of the board of ed and said that you know we've done a little talking and we feel that the numbers shifted more and it's about 275 now um, she spoke with the superintendent of schools and uh, they're working on a plan to find that 275 in their budget at this point Are but they she does know she, excuse me she oh. does know it was a proposal and that it needs a vote of council are they aware of the uh, recommendation to OPM and the urgency of the um, that that discussion only occurred today 
between the town manager and myself. So I did have a conversation with her today and she said that she would make sure it was on the board agenda for their meeting next week. Okay. It's the first I had heard of it and the first that she had heard of it was today after three, three o'clock. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Councilor Hurley. Okay, and just to clarify, we did agree on the fireworks. We didn't agree on the whole budget. We agreed on a six thousand dollar. That would be of way it. too much to ask, Councilor okay. Hurley. I so understand. We agreed on the six thousand dollars yes. because I thought that was appropriate. Yes. Because they, I think, the chamber raises something like twenty five thousand to put on the fireworks. So I thought it would be appropriate sure, for the town to put in six. Sure, and it's a great community event. But I did not agree with all the the others. So. I understand. Thank you for the clarification. Uh, any other council members? Councilor Forrest? Should we, um, and I'm sort of asking, oh, sure. this microphone's really getting to me. Um, should we um, formally inform the Board of Education of the time frame with which we're expecting a response? So in this, should we say, and a plan should be delivered back to the town council by you know, the Wednesday after, or after their date, instead of sort of just leaving it out there? If this is the, if this is the intention of this, and. This is sort of our, in a, in a way, directive, figure it out, come back, set the, do, set the due date. And, and because we have requirements too on our side from what I'm hearing. So I'm not gonna propose an amendment right now, I'm happy to do it, but you know, I'll hear from, other, I'll hear from the town manager and mayor and so forth, see if you guys think that's a good idea, happy to make the motion and you can make it a day after the next board meeting or whatever you think's appropriate. Resolving this sooner so we can get into the 2019 budget would be better. <clears throat> What, and what date, what date would you recommend that uh, we uh, request a response by? I agree. Sometime next week after the board meeting would be appropriate, unless you're going to do a special meeting in between somewhere. But we would need it by the end of the month, definitely, for, to get ready for our meeting on the 5th. And let's see, do they meet on uh, the 22nd? Is that their scheduled meeting? Jeez, I don't know. I mean, I'm just going next. They meet on, uh, or they meet on Tuesdays, right? They meet uh, on Tuesday. I should, I should be the one that knows this. Um, yeah. The 20, <laughs> there's a joke in there, believe me. Uh, the 23rd. 23rd. All right. So, uh, does 24th sound, generally sound okay? Sure. Okay, so I'll, I'll move to amend uh, the motion that Councilor Martino uh, has proposed and add uh, and request a response by vote of the Board of Education by the 24th of January 2018. Thank you. Do I have a second for the amendment? Second. Thank you, Councilor Breton. Any discussion, any further discussion on either the amendment or the um, motion, Councilor Latina? Um, quick question, how did the state come up with $867,674 in holdbacks on ECS? We believe that's the value of what would have been distributed as a cost to the town had the governor gotten his way with teachers' pensions. That would have been our portion this year had that gone through? Yes. That's the generally accepted assumption, that he got what he wanted on teachers' pensions. The holdback to ECS was roughly $60 million, and that's what he was looking for in teachers' pensions back to the towns. Now, I don't know how it works, because some of that was supposed to be distributed to all the communities, but some communities didn't receive a reduction. So it might behoove us to make note of that number going forward as we put our budget together for next year. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other council comments or questions? Okay, seeing none, I'll call for a vote. Um, yeah. All, uh, the, the vote on the amendment, all in favor? Aye. 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 No. 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 Okay, and then, um, do, Dolores, do you have that vote? Is that seven to two? I think it was six, I six three. Majority. I said no. Okay. Okay, thank so you. Six, three. And then if we could have a vote on the motion, all in favor? Aye. 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 No. No. No, thanks. Okay. Dolores, it's a six, three vote right. again? Okay, yeah. very good, thank you. Our next agenda item is um, B3C, a memorandum of agreement. Do I have a motion? Uh, yes, M um, motion to approve memorandum of agreement regarding use of federal fiscal year 2017 state homeland security grant funding and custodial ownership of regional assets in DEMHS -E region three. 
Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Our manager? <laughs> Thank you, Madam Mayor and Council. This is an annual agreement um, which basically provides that the town of Weathersfield uh, determines that Demas and Krog manage the local homeland security dollars that are available through the federal government. Um, there's a piece of this that gets um, sent to the state for regional uh, services, um, you know, airborne warning type things, radiological, chemical type things, um, the Connecticut Intelligence Centers, which the police department use for intelligence purposes, and those are on state levels. Then locally, CROG also handles regional teams like the regional SWAT team, regional dive team. Um, there's certain equipment that we share regionally and they manage those resources, uh, they both the material assets and the financial assets of those, of those dollars. So this is something we do every year. It's worked very well. Um, recommend approval. Great, thank you. Do we have any council questions or comments on this? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody abstaining? Any nays? Okay, the motion passes. Um, we have no bids, no ordinances, resolutions, or appointments for introduction. So we have the minutes of January 2nd. Do we have a motion? So moved to approve. Second. Okay, are there any corrections, additions, or deletions? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any, any nays, any abstentions? Okay, the motion carries. Uh, we will enter public comment. Gus, come on up. Public comments limited to five minutes. Thank you. Good evening, Gas Call Antonio, 16 Morrison Avenue. I guess, you know, you must think that I really love to come up here. Well, I don't, but mm -hmm. I, uh, I will not go away. On uh, numerous occasions, the town manager has, said, has stated that uh, I got all the answers to the questions that I ask, I guess, over the last nine to 10 years. And yet, the only answer that I can remember is that there are too many stop signs and we don't want to install it anymore. That's one thing. Not too long ago, I've asked the question, well, no, last year sometimes, basically. After the construction of the sidewalk, did, uh, did the police add another chance of uh, looking at their intersection between Tifton and Morrison Avenue to see if it was okay? And I was told, Yes, they have reviewed it and everything is okay. Which I don't have any reasons not to believe that, but uh, usually when you ask the police department or any <laughs> agency within the town, uh, I guess something is written. And if it's possible, can I really get uh, a copy of whatever they said? Because, you know, I, I've seen it, uh, correspondence before where, uh, you know, the previous town <coughs> manager said, yeah, at such and such a date, we have done what you asked for and so forth and so on. Because I just cannot understand why the police department would say you need a, vac you need a stop sign in one direction, you can see 290 feet, and yet you don't need a stop sign if you can only see 232 feet. That's one thing. Uh, last year, again, I asked the question, the town the town engineer, which is a PE and everything else, he has all the information that I have. I would like a statement from him to say that this intersection and Tifton and Morrison Avenue is safe. I've asked and I did not get it yet. This was last year sometimes. <clears throat> not too long ago, I guess there was a, an accident on Morrison Avenue close by uh, Silas Dean, somebody was coming from a driveway and uh, somebody was going too fast and uh, they had an accident. And, and I was complaining. I got out of that driveway and it's impossible to see it. There is an evergreen there and the town manager mumbled, said, no, we're doing something. 
Okay, we're doing something. I also mentioned basically the sidewalk and orchard where the, the edges are halfway on a sidewalk side. Oh, we're taking care of it. We're taking care of it. Well, how long do we have to wait? I mean, it seems that every time I see the street and the work that the town does, there is no really accountability at all. Nothing whatsoever. I don't know why. I worked for 37 years and I, and I felt good. I was responsible. <clears throat> I mean, I cared about my job. But sometimes I wonder right here. They came and replaced the bituminous concrete on, uh, on, on the corner of, uh, of Orchard and Morrison Avenue. But yet, they did not replace the, conc the bituminous concrete on Walker Hill and Morrison Avenue. I say, why? Why is it because they did not see it? It's impossible. Or they chose to, to, to fix one and not the other? I also asked a question, you know, many months ago or maybe years ago, says, if you never had any intention of doing anything at all on Hillcrest Avenue and Orchard, why did you ever take the intersectional side distance of, on that intersection? It meets all the standards. They have three stop signs. It says it was installed many years ago. It, the fact still remains. Morrison Avenue was built. It was never meant to be connected to Silas Dean. The frontage of the houses to the street is completely less than Hillcrest Avenue. So years ago, in 1955, we did not really have any true traffic. Now we have twice as many cars on Morrison Avenue than on Hillcrest Avenue. And I asked the question, why? And I got all the answers. Well, I'm still waiting. And I would wait, and I would come right here every time I have a chance. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else like to speak? Mr. Mazzarella? Tom Mazzarella, 600 Walcott Hill Road. just want to make one comment on the fracking waste proposal. I haven't seen any language on it, but uh, it was indicated that it would include uh, some kind of statement that the town could not use any material that was involved with fracking waste or a byproduct of fracking waste. Um, one of the commenters tonight said, you know, this, this ban doesn't have any cost to the town, which on its face, it appears so. Just, you know, have a couple meetings, review some language, and, and put this as an ordinance uh, in the town uh, documents. Well, there could be a cost, because if you notice that little discussion between the town manager and Councilor Rell about millings and whether or not they should be deposited on that Balf property if we don't really know what's in some of this stuff. And it may come to the point where the town needs to buy a material, whether it's a, a, a fill material or millings or road salt or brine solution for treating roads for winter. And if you have a uh, ordinance that's in place that is so strict that you require all the suppliers to state without a doubt that there is no dangerous material in their product. They may not be able to do that. They may say, we can't sell you road brine because we're not really sure where it came from. We know we bought it from XYZ company in Wichita or wherever. They may not know what's in it. You know, kind of reminds me of, uh, if you go back a few years, the, the Y2K issue. And everybody spent a tremendous amount of time and energy, you know, making these statements that said, we're, we're covered. We've got all our bases covered in case, you know, this Y2K thing really stops the whole world. And uh, this, this could kind of turn into some kind of situation like that, where you can't really prove if the stuff is clean or it's not clean. 
Now on the state side, they have a, a proposal or a moratorium in place that basically says that if the material is found to be acceptable by the state, then you could use it. But our town ordinance may supersede that and say, no, you can't. It doesn't matter if the state says it's okay or it's not okay. And I just question whether the town of Wethersfield has the ability to determine whether the material's safe or not safe. I would think we would defer to the state that has chemists and environmental protection agency and all this uh, resources to prove whether something's harmful or not harmful, and yet the town of Wethersfield is going to say, no, we know better. So, like I said, it appears to be relatively harmless, and I'm all for protecting the environment and so forth, but you don't want to put something in place that's going to tie the town's hands and make it uh, cost prohibitive to buy some of these materials and, and to operate our town. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else like to speak? Come on up. Um, Farah Evanson, 570 Walcott Hill Road. Um, I'm here to support the fracking ban. Um, actually, they are a, a cleaner alternative to flat fracking. There's different technologies that companies can use to frack. And I feel if we p push these big companies to use a an alternative, they will. We are the consumers. We tell these big companies what we want. They, we are the little guys. They're the big guys. They're the guys with the money. And they have the technology and the people um, to basically do better for the environment. They choose not to because it's a lot cheaper. So I feel if we start on a town level, we will push the state to push the big fossil fuel companies to do better. Um, and I feel like Weathersfield should join the towns around um, because we're a cool town. We're a town that care about the environment. I have five children in town, and I feel like it's a nonpartisan issue. Um, we all care about the environment, Republican, Democrats. Um, and I feel like we have smart counselors. You will do your research, and you'll realize that it's the right thing to do. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else like to speak? Bob Young. Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. Um, as far as the fracking goes, uh, and the way your vote went, I still say you should turn off your natural gas. That is a product that is very susceptible to fracking, which, sunk, which you now tonight voted against. And same with these citizens. They should go home and turn off their natural gas also and protest. They talk about, one lady spoke about going after the big companies. That's the way you do it. Go home and turn off your natural gas so you don't pay CNG, who in turn pays whoever else, who ships it over here for it to be used. And you need to back off and, and put your money where your mouth is. Otherwise, if you're going to continue using it, you're a hypocrite. <laughs> you're a hypocrite if you continue using this product, which is called natural gas. Anyway, I'm sure these young ladies tonight will go home and shut their gas off, and I'm sure the town of Wethersfield tomorrow morning will shut it off too and send a crew out and chop down some trees in order to keep yourselves warm. Maybe you'll send out some of these people who you just uh, gave a decrease in their budget. Send them out to chop some wood. They'd gladly take care of your wood needs. They'd tell you where to go. Very poor management tonight on decisions. I know someone mentioned a moment ago how smart you people are. You know I have no, no doubts how lacking you folks are. Tonight, when you voted in favor of 
taking $876,000 and spreading it across X amount of departments, making all of those other departments loaded down with pain. And you saved the Board of Ed again. The Board of Ed, the most arrogant bunch of people we have in this town. <laughs> they couldn't care less about dollars because they know they're going to get them. Any dollars they need, they're going to get from the town council. And everybody else, fly a kite. And I'm tired of it, and I'm, I've been very tired of it. And they have plenty of cash. And they could cut corners and take that $876,000 bite because it's their money that's being reduced, not these other groups. And you need to, I don't expect you to do anything, Mayor. You see, I expect what you did because as I said, you folks are all lacking. And you can take it any way you want. But that, that just shows how you vote and how you think. The, the, they get the most amount of money and they get reduced from the cut that they had. Not right. Others are gonna pay for the price now. And then as you go into next year, you're gonna have even more serious problems. And I've been talking about this for a number of years. And the only reason it's now happening is because the state can't borrow any more money. And I'm glad they can't borrow any more money because what they've been doing was raking everybody over the coals. All the citizens were getting hammered with the debt load that we have. 74, 75 billion dollars we owe in, in, in all types of funding, all types of borrowing. And they've been supporting you all these years. We don't support ourselves. And as I've said, we could support ourselves if we took our money and put it into our pool and didn't send it to the state of Connecticut. But you people have no backbone. You don't jump on your state representatives. You support those representatives who continue to take our money and the, the 80 million, 90 million dollars that we citizens send to Harford on an annual basis in all kinds of taxes. And we get back how little? We get a fraction because of their mismanagement. And you folks have followed their lead in how you manage. Same as their way. So anyway, Mayor, you're in for a good time. I'm sure your surrogates that took good care of you tonight, like they've taken care of the town council and other meetings. And you'll get what you want, but I think the mayor and the manager are going to have a lot of work going ahead, going forward on your budgets. Thank you for your comments. And yes, ma'am. You, you betcha. Is, 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 do I have two seconds left or do I? Your five minutes are up. You can, you can finish your comment. Okay, but I think we're going to see a lot more of this going on. Uh, there isn't any doubt in my mind that it's going to improve. We've lost a lot of millionaires and billionaires and we lost a load of normal people who also have money and pay taxes. I don't know what we're, you're gonna have left after all of that said and done, ma'am, but I, you need to readjust your budgets in accordance to what you're going to have for citizens. And if your citizens don't make a lot of money, if your citizens can't pony up, you have a real tough time running a town. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else wish to speak? Come on up. Casey White, I don't know if, to say, if I have to say my name again. <laughs> Casey White, 91 Center Street. <clears throat> um, the point about a hypothetical that we might have to not have a supplier for de-icing brine, uh, if we included a, a clause in the ordinance requiring a certification from suppliers that there was no fracking waste in the product. That's a hypothetical. I mean, I, I think probably the industry could adjust. And honestly, I don't really think that a race to the bottom of ignorance is a smart way to go. Um, 
industries have shown that when they get consumer pressure, when they get government pressure, and when they're required to keep track of information and document it and share it, they can do that. That's not an insurmountable problem. Um, so I'd like to be part of that pressure um, rather than willfully ignoring um, potential problems and acting like if we don't know what the problem is, if we don't know how bad it is, then it doesn't exist because that's not how uh, real life works. We can still suffer the consequences. Um, so that's all for tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak? If not, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting is adjourned. Thank you and good night. <laughs>